Okay, in the previous videos, we decided that we were going to write a host. We Also in the previous videos, we finished this interface DLL. We have my algorithm. We have your algorithm. They're not much different from each other. Yours is going to give hundreds, while mine will give tens. Uh, so these are all done. also want to point out, and remember that we will implement the interface, and the host will talk to us through this interface. And now at runtime, I want to write a host that will use reflection to detect our types in here. If you remember, I n notice I put all the old code, old code here. So here is the code that was in the interface DLL, and then here's the code that was in the my chess algorithm, your chess algorithm, roughly the same code. And using reflection, we're going to find these classes and not really care about their names, but just care that they exist, instantiate them, and use them. So let's write a host that does just that. First of all, we need to get a representation of the assembly in our program. All right, let me... Let me bring this command prompt back up. When I say assembly, for now you can think DLL. That's fine. If you want to learn more about assemblies, go watch the assembly programming playlist. I think that's important. That'll, When people say .NET to you, you'll understand a little bit more what .NET means if you can understand assemblies. They're not much different from DLLs, but there are, there's a bunch of things to know. For now, when I say DLL uh, or assembly, just that's fine. Uh, we have my chess algorithm, your chess algorithm. We need to load these up into our program. Just the fact that they will be sitting there in the same directory as our directory doesn't really matter. We want to actually load them up. So I'm going to say var uh, algorithm. Actually, not so far. Let's 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 be explicit here. Assembly control dot enter to get the system dot reflection namespace in. This is the namespace that does reflection. We've seen it before. Assembly uh, algorithm. Uh, let's, let's call it player one. Player one gets assembly dot load, and you're just going to have to stick with me here. Again, watch the assembly programming playlist. But we we load assemblies generally by their names. Uh, the actual name of the file does not matter. So my chess algorithm. I'm going to right click and say mark, highlight this, hit enter. And I can paste it right here, put a semicolon, and that's player one. And then assembly, assembly, I think uh, I'll push this off for now. We probably don't need it. Player two gets assembly.load. Your chess, well, control V, and then put your over here. Your chess algorithm. All right, so we've loaded these assemblies, and these assemblies are pretty cool. I can say player one dot, hey, give me all the types inside of that assembly. Well, with the interface DLL, there's there's three types, is there not? There's there's this struct here, and there's this enum, and then there's this iChess game. But inside of our actual player assemblies, we could put several types and have some helper classes in there and write some very complicated artificial intelligence code. But we, we made some pretty simple assemblies. All we have are these single types here. But I want to be as dynamic as possible so that 10 years down the road, if you want to write some really involved algorithm with lots of types in there, that's fine. I want to find the type that implements this interface. That's the only thing I care about. I want what, what, what class or whatever it is implements this interface so that I can instantiate one of these and start invoking it and getting some data out of it. So back on get types, I'm going to say, give me all the types dot let's uh you know i'm going to be fancy and use the link for this you could certainly use some uh for loops and stuff just as easy but i'm going to use link give me the types where or no there should be a single type okay if you give me more than one type with an interface that implements this interface i won't know what to do so so single will blow up if there is more than one but i don't, I don't really worry about that for this this video give me the single one where the type T give me the interfaces that type implements. Let me make this a little more readable. Player one, let's say var player algorithm type. And I'm sorry I keep using var here, it's just natural, but I'm gonna say type, I'll be explicit. Uh, player one, give me the types, um, the single type where the interfaces. Give me the interfaces. Are any of those interfaces 
I'll call it I, even though I feels like a number. Give me the interfaces. I'm trying to format this for you. Where I dot get type uh, equals, I'll do a dot equals, dot equals type of, and then what's the name of our interface class? Because I'm not going to get in Telesense help with this. I chess game. Right, I chess game. And oh, look at all these parentheses I've got to add there. That's pretty deep. That's pretty deep. But hopefully that makes sense. I'm saying, hey, player one. Uh, player one assembly, I know you got a bunch of types in there. Please find me the one type where it implements the iChess game interface. And then once we have the instance, of, or not, we don't have an instance of that type quite yet. We have uh, the type object. So like we've seen in previous videos, I need to instantiate one of these. So I'll say um, I chess game. Again, we're not getting IntelliSense help because I didn't add the reference to the project. I certainly could and then IntelliSense would start working, but I don't want to. I'm, 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 let's take off the training wheels and get rid of the pixie dust for a few videos at least. I chess game, player one, uh, I'll call it impl for implementation, gets activator. We've seen this before. Activator. Dot, hey, create me an instance. Boy, I'm really getting bugged by how much we have to scroll sideways here. Create me an instance of the player algorithm type. All right, so so in theory, in theory, this this should be an instance. If all this code is correct, this should be an instance. Uh, and now we need to do it for player two. And so I could copy this code and paste it for player two, but I don't think so. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is show off even more and uh, I could, I could, I was thinking about putting this in a, a nested function, an anonymous method, or maybe even a lambda expression, but it's actually kind of hideous and ugly for even that much, so I'm going to do, be a little wiser, hopefully, and just make a, a function itself. So I'm going to highlight all this, and generally I do this by hand, but let's see how well Visual Studio can do this for me. I'm going to hit Shift F10, bring up the context menu, refactor, extract method, and we'll say, we'll call it create player algorithm instance, enter, and there we go. And I want to return an iChess game instead of void. And I think we could just say return right here. So I think, I think we're good. Notice, so this host, host assembly only needs to worry about iChess game. I know I've drawn it several times, but here's the host, here's the interface, and the two-player interfaces. The host doesn't really care what's in here. It just wants an iChess game thing that's from here. That's all. We're decoupling the host from the add-ins. Right? The host knows about this, but it doesn't care about the concrete types. And I, I worked at a place with this really grumpy old man that had been programming for years, and oh... He was grumpy, but he was extremely intelligent. He was just grumpy. And the one thing he kept saying to me all the time, he's like, Jamie, you always want to write code that, let's see, the new code can call old code. Oh, no, no, the old code can call new code without changing the old code. I was like, oh, what was he talking about? He'd say that over and over again. The old code can call new code without changing the old code. And if you think about it, yeah, uh, if I write this interface correctly, then I could come around and write all sorts of AI algorithms, and I could do it for 40 years, and never would I ever have to change this, nor would I have to change the host if we wrote the host correctly. We're not going to take the host all the way out in these videos. It would, it would, it's not necessary for me just teaching you, but you'll get the idea. But I could write these forever, and as long as they implement that interface, then our code... Uh, we would have to make these strings dynamic for our, our DLLs, but, but we could certainly do that in some configuration file. But other than that, we would never have to change this code. This code could be the same for always and ever. And, and that's what he meant, is old code can call new code. right? Old code, old code can call new code without having to change the old code. So do you like how much I'm scribbling on the screen here? Let me get rid of that. Right, I hope that made sense. Let's uh, create player algorithm instance player one. I'm going to call this player one assembly. I think that's a little more descriptive of a name, assembly. And then uh, 
here I can say I chess game uh, player one gets that and then I chess game player two gets hey guess what it's the exact same thing as this control C control V but I'm gonna say player two there instead so I think I think we're good I obviously can't build this because I am being stubborn and don't want to reference that interface DLL but you get the idea. In the next video, I'm actually going to try going to try to compile this, and I think it'll work. But we might have an error, and we'll fix it there if we do, and and should be good.